And what does the future hold for these extremist groups and the Republican Party? We're joined now by Rich Lowry. He's editor of the Conservative National Review. And Rich, good morning. You know, these ideas, I, I normally wouldn't have a political analyst on to discuss something like this, but these ideas that used to be fringe and in the dark corners of the Internet have spilled out, taken hold. We saw what happened on Wednesday and a not insignificant uh, portion of your party, the Republican Party, folks believe these theories. Uh, what, how concerned are you about that? I'm quite concerned. Look, the president of the United States has emboldened these people. He's given them legitimacy. And obviously the backdrop to the storming of the Capitol is that if you take seriously and believe what the president has been saying about our election, that it was stolen from us by a nefarious and corrupt elite and our democracy no longer exists, that would justify, if it were true, violent revolution. And sadly, a lot of those people who broke into the Capitol believed it quite sincerely. So I think it's incumbent on all Republicans to tell the truth, to denounce the president's lies, to denounce his conduct since the election, and denounce his responsibility for what happened on Wednesday. Well, you make a good point, because here you have this young woman, Ashley Babbitt, who, a former veteran who served our country, believing it so much that she gave her life. She went to the Capitol we don't know the circumstances, but ended up with a, a bullet and lost her life because she believed this. Yeah, uh, she, and she was betrayed um, by, by a lot of people. Not just the president, there's a whole infrastructure devoted. Uh, some people who are genuinely kooks, some people who are cynics and think this is a way to make a buck or to get traffic or to get eyeballs on their cable networks, who've promoted this stuff. And it's deeply wrong, and the Republican Party has a lot of soul-searching to do. And there's going to be a lot of work taking it back fully from these sort of folks. Well, there's the QAnon, which is, you know, when you read about some of the things that they believe, it's like you would it's, it's really out there. But then there are a large number of Republicans who believe because the president has told them that this was a fraudulent election, that it was stolen, that there's something wrong with what happened, um, you know, with ballots or fraud. They really believe this. I mean, good hearted people who believe this because they've been told this right. by the president. Um, what do you do about that? Again, I mean, the only answer is, is telling the truth. And I think a lot of Republicans were too quiet too long about what the president was saying and doing the last two months. That said, I think the real he heroes of this interlude were Republicans. They were the Republican state officials, local officials, Republican judges, some of whom were appointed uh, by President Trump themselves, who, uh, when they had the ability to actually do his bidding on, uh, and uh, try to overturn the election to a man and to a woman, said no. So I think that's heartening. They looked at the evidence, uh, and the president did get his day in court, several days in court. Uh, you know, all the legal remedies were exhausted. So I, I guess that's the, the good news here. Yeah. And this, and I think also on, on Wednesday in the Senate, you only had six or seven Republicans objecting to the electors. That's six or seven too many in my mind. But you had Mitch McConnell standing up forcefully. You had Mike Pence you know, which was a, a key element of what happened Wednesday was the president's anger at Mike, Mike Pence that he wouldn't try to abuse his office and declare Trump uh, the winner, standing up, you know, at great political cost to himself. You had 2024 hopefuls like Tom Cotton saying no. So I think all that's good. But the, the party, there's going to be a long civil war within the party between the Trump forces and the conservatives. That's a good conversation to have, Rich. Thank you so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.